All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to one and Whoa, one. what is this? Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. Did something happen that was strange? What happened? Well, you got some you got some new shit? Hold on. Good morning. What? Good afternoon. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> and good night. What is this? What is it? I want this. It's that you probably have it waiting in that box from you. It's the, the sound effects on the new roadcaster. I want this. Yeah, the sound effects are pretty tight. Bro, I can finally do all those creepy calls I wanted to do for, to call women. Yeah, sure you can. And tell them I'm in the fuck up. I, I can finally introduce the character I've been waiting to show the world. You know which character I mean? Which character? The Mad Podcaster. Oh, yeah. Like, ask me questions, for example. Go ahead. Like, what do you think the, what do you think the best hip-hop podcast is? Well, I mean, let's be honest. No one gives credit to the real best hip hop podcast. Yeah. I'm talking about Juan Epstein. That was That's the right. original. Juan Epstein. All these other you're, talking about the, you're talking about the guys with the horrible marketing. Yes, those ones. <laughs> or, or maybe this. Maybe this is the better voice for me yeah. to talk about my hate. Listen, yeah. I invented Joe Budden. This right. Joe Budden without me. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right. right. I set the blueprint for Rory. There yeah. was no cool white boy friend on a hip hop show before me. That's right. That's right. I'm That's, the right. One. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So here's the thing. Welcome to the Patreon episode of One Up Is Life, but also what we're now calling emergency episodes. These are bit. This is a new thing now. This is there's something going on. There's something in the water. Yeah, called raging anti-Semitism. As I walk. <laughs> As I walk down the street last night, I go, I see some people. I go, uh oh, emergency episode. One app emergency episode. So here's the deal. Um, first of all, me and my friend Peter Rosenberg last night did Math Hoffa podcast. We did, we did. Did Fine. not go the way I wanted it to go mm. because it didn't? No. Well, it was fun. It, it was, no, no, no. It went great. It was a fucking great time. But it didn't go the way I wanted to go because, first of all, we started off with takeoff. So that just put us in a zone of rest in peace, rappers killing each other. Yeah, like rappers dying. You know, it turned into that whole conversation, which is like, no, social media is to blame. No, this is to blame. Uh, Rappers are too accessible. So, you know, whatever. Uh, You know, we can't even list like who was the last one to die. We don't even remember. We're getting desensitized. So that was the way it started. And then it turned into more of a. uh, It was a lot of talk about radio DJs playing records, a lot of payola talk, which was very interesting. But it was not the angle I was shooting for uh, when we went up there. But first of all, Math Hoffa, great. Mecca, great. the guy champ that was there was super cool. So anyway, uh, my point is we did um, uh, Math Hoffa, which is called, in my expert opinion, that doing that show made me late to the comedy cellar. Oh, no. But it was all good. It all worked out. The show actually started a little late. It actually worked out. It was a little bit late. Then we hung out for a while. A bunch of comics were just sitting around sad about this guy, Steve, Big Steve King. That he was a bouncer at the at the cellar. There's the fucking coolest dude ever. Passed away yesterday. And we're just all super sad about it. Uh, but for, but I, you know what's so funny? I mm. never do this. I broke down on Instagram and I was actually like crying a little and you cry. You have safe. You're you're getting really deep into Instagram if you're now crying on Instagram. I didn't want to, but I didn't. Want, I was really? like, fuck it, man. This is real. And the point was, I wanted to. Uh, there was a GoFundMe created for his family and his family's two kids and his wife, and they're always at the cellar. Really nice people. I've given his kids so much like loose clothes that I had, and they really nice. His wife is super nice, and uh, I wanted to see if I could help contribute to their GoFundMe. And um, the shit is that's a ninety four thousand right now. So that may be in part because of your tears. So my tears are worth money, baby. So if you could. Go to my the link in my Instagram, and if you could any any little bit helps for I'm telling you a great guy, man. That has nothing else. He his mm. his whole income was at the comedy cellar, and he was family. Anyway, so 
sitting there talking with, with all these comics. So I stayed later than I wanted to. Perfect timing for me to walk out of the comedy cellar down the street uh, past the Village Underground, which is across the street from the Blue Note. Blue Note famous jazz club. Robert Glasper's at the Blue Note all month long, doing a whole month residency. Okay. He has a bunch of different people popping in and out, guest musicians, guest rappers. Last night, guest rapper was the one and only Grand Poobah from the legendary hip-hop group Brand Nubian. And I tell you, I never run into Grand Poobah. I never and run I'm, into Grand Poobah. And I'm telling you right now, Grand Poobah, Lord Jamal, Sadat X, Brand Nubian is... Um, Big influence in my early days of it's how I became a five percenter. How they introduced me to the whole world, blah blah blah. They mean a lot to me. Mm-hmm. Now, now this is going to be some tough medicine for you to take today because I need to ask you some questions. Okay. So, if you don't know what okay. happened, if you didn't listen to the regular one ep- episode, we talked about Grand Puba posting a picture with Kanye saying the term. What did, what was the phrase? It was something like change ancient, or, ancient, ancient change or still the same. Like <laughs> if you don't I know what's going on, Rosenberg uh, comments with an in caps unfollow. Yep. So now I run into Grand Poobah, who was with Lord Jamal. Lord Jamar. You just called him Lord Jamal? I said Jamal, but I didn't say the L, but I didn't. It was the lazy R. All right. Got it. And I'm saying a strong R, Jamar. Okay. And he just he just walks over to me laugh. <laughs> and I said, I know I know exactly where well, this is going. About- <laughs> I know exactly where this is going. So now. Here's my question. Okay. Uh we basically the conversation was about you, but not you know not too much. Like I say, yo, what's up? With, what's up with you and my man? He's like, yo, Pooba's like, I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. He said something, and my fans lit him up. <laughs> he said there was like a thousand, there was a thousand comments just on your comment. That's it. That's where all the comments were. Were just against me. That's correct. So here's how I operate, and I need to understand how you operate. Okay. This is a learning I, opportunity. I ask him about the sitch. Puba says, I didn't say nothing. He said that his fan, my fans lit him up. Okay. Then Jamar was like, nah, I spoke to your man. I spoke to your man. And then he um he unfollows, but then he comes back and hits me on the DMs. Why the fuck is he unfollowing? How does he know what's going on if he unfollowed? I said, good question. Wait, Jamar said this? Jamar said that. I don't think I even uh, followed Jamar, though. I unfollowed Pooba, not Jamar. Puba. Yeah, but 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 the your conversation with Jamar started in Pooba's comments. Yes, correct. And then I DM'd him. But you had already unfollowed Pooba. Yeah, I said unfollow. Means, I have, to, I have a man on my word. Which you word. went back and checked. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay. I saw how many people were coming at me. How did you know they were coming at you? Because you would get notifications? Oh, no, oh, I hear what you're saying, because I wrote unfollow. Right. If you unfollowed, here, why are you back on there? Yeah, because I knew, because I, I mean, to be totally honest, I, I knew it would cause shit. I wanted okay. to see how bad the shit would be. Okay. So this is, these are the questions I have for you. Go so ahead. he says, why is your man back on there if he unfollowed? I, good question. Fair point. Good question. Fair point. And then he said, I, then we DM'd and I told him, to, you, you, apparently you said to Lord Jamar, I see you back on your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I see you back on your bullshit And uh, That he said yo tell him to come to my Podcast So here's what I did I jump in I say Yeah I made a video about Kanye And I think um, You know he's in need of some mental Help Mental health help Jamar's like, nah, y'all always trying to call these motherfuckers crazy when they make good points and everything is about mental health because you trying to knock down. Da, 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 da. I said, I said, Kanye could be making excellent points. Kanye can be a creative genius, but also 
need mental health. That's a great, great way of putting it. Sure. Nah, fuck that. That's how they put us in a box. Then he said, um, maybe he's just one. Because I said, I said, I, I have a little bit of insight. He goes, y'all motherfuckers ain't no medical doctors. I said, well, for what Kanye needs, it's not even a, a medical doctor that's needed. So no. your point is also moot. But yep. I said, so um, this guy loves to argue. This is oh, what he does. He loved you know, Jamar. And then he's like, yo, Rosenberg's not even one of them type of Jews, man. He probably eats pork. And I yelled, no, he also sets up a Christmas tree every once in a while. Oh, well, with my <laughs> wife, I did. She's not there. She knows I'm divorced. You don't do that anymore. I do not do it anymore. Okay, well, you set up a Christmas tree. And I, I, I used to carry. I think so, my I think my ex wife used to get off on watching me carry the Christmas tree down the street. <laughs> I like like how Jesus carried the cross. I think that's I'm not that. I think she was like, look at this guy carrying this tree. Hurry up. So um, so he goes. So I go from from Kanye's connection to Dave Chappelle. I have a little bit more of personal insight. And there is some kind of medication, diagnosis, all that type of shit. I said, yo, Kanye could be making the greatest points ever, but it's also scattered brain, which is sometimes the um, symptom of these mental illnesses. Not taking nothing away from Kanye. I still, to this day, love Kanye. I love his music. I love everything he's done. You know, not everything, not everything he's done, but I'm not, I'm still a fan of Kanye West, the musician and the fashion designer. All this shit lately is, is wild to me, but it's not going to ever take away from how I love the song crack music. Right. Sure. So, so he goes, nah, he tried to put us in a box. And then he said, maybe he's one of those savants, you know, how they geniuses, but they kind of weird. And I go, in my mind, I go, yeah, but also maybe those savants back in the day before there was mental health um, uh, remedies. It, it, yeah, maybe we had a word for that. It was called a savant, but maybe also back then it was undiagnosed mental illness. Now, here's where Cypher Sounds comes in. Okay, I'm going to stop arguing with two of my heroes from a legendary group that I grew up on. Right, sure you are. Because this is not my issue. I don't care about Kanye West. I don't care about his rants and his... And I'm not taking sides here. Because one day when this all dies down, I want to be able to interview or talk to Grand Poo by Lord Jamal Sadat X. I don't want to have these issues where they go, nah, I don't fuck with him. Don't include Sadat X in this nonsense. But keep going. Because whatever, brand newbie Right. If they have a brand re brand newbie reunion tour, I want to go. Right. Okay. So I know all, and also like the same way. I don't care about Kanye West rants and 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 what he's doing politically or or in the media as far as like you know uh, talking bad about groups of people, whatever. I would still go to a Kanye West concert. I, it's just, I, I'm a fan of his music and his art. So I leave it alone. I go, hey, you got your opinion. I got mine. I'm just telling you, um, you know, I'll, get, I'll relate a re the message to Rosenberg that maybe he should do your podcast. So this gets me to think. Oh, this, this was my point. The same way that Jamar, it was mostly Jamar, but Puba was, you know, still there. The same way they have their opinions and maybe also might be anti-Semitic and Ye has these anti-Semitic remarks. I bet you a lot of people I know are anti-Semitic. Oh, yeah. Why, why do you think so many people are quiet on this? Because they generally agree. Okay. But also, that's one topic that I do not agree with as your philosophy or as your thought pattern or anything, but I could still like your art and I could still like you as a person. But that's also with racist. You could be racist towards Latinos. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? I pick and choose where I would deal with these people. Oh, right, 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 right. 
but it you know what I mean it doesn't, it doesn't bother you, it doesn't mean you can't have any inter interaction they Correct. may not they if they hold views that are insane they may not ever make it to your innermost circle but that doesn't mean you can't have a relationship but i also know that i don't know how they got to these conclusions yeah uh, yeah and when we had the conversation with jamar the first time it was clear that a lot of it was based on made up inaccurate assumptions about you about me when we had that right. conversation about about you but then also there's a like so now okay so my whole point of all of this yeah, yeah. where are we going to, what, what, okay is to get to you me who me i'm talking about you now why get mad at pooba and write unfollow and take this stance because he's taking a stance. What is it that you need to do? What is your goal here? In that moment, I'm not looking for anything. I'm not seeking anything out. I just follow followed Pooba on IG. And I see he decided in that moment to just throw up a random arbitrary, yo, Kanye West is my man. Right? I immediately view that as... If you're asserting to the world right now that Kanye is your man, mm -hmm. to me, and I could be wrong, I take that as I am publicly saying I take no issue with the shit that he's saying. That's how I take it. Okay, so you're taking that as he's anti-Semitic? He's at, Or he's okay with anti-Semitism. What about... going to change anything. What about if you twisted the perspective a little bit Go ahead. and he's pro black, pro Kanye? B. It if you the different angles, a black man is being attacked. Sure, sure. So, and think about who said Grand Pooba. I mean, listen, you ever heard the song "Wake Up"? Like it's about the white devil. Facts. So. Yeah, we love the rhymes and the beats, but some of the message of Brand Nubian, especially back in those days, was heavy based in 5% culture, Malcolm X, Farrakhan, Elijah Muhammad, uh, 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 the, uh, Father Allah from the 5%. You know what I'm saying? It's all mixed all in. Things that, all things that hovered right around anti-Semitic tropes regularly. Uh, right? Okay. But a black a black icon is being attacked. Sure. Why do you have to jump in? What does it have to do with you? Why do you feel the need to jump in? He's being, quote, attacked for saying, I believe dangerous things about. I don't like the term my people because no, this is this is Kanye, though. Why write unfollow on Grand Pooba's page? Oh, 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 yeah. Because to me, I feel this need uh, when I when I'm reading things about how Jewish hate crimes are up five hundred percent, and I'm seeing the 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 tenor of conversation on my social media in a different sort of stratosphere of anti-Semitism than ever before, and I'm really feeling like the 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 hate coming harder. It makes me, for good or bad, go, I can't just, like, let this go. I can't just let him say, hey, I'm good with anti-Semitism. Just so you know, you have but people there, who but follow a, you who that hurts. There, But there's – maybe he's not just saying I'm good with anti-Semitism. That's, maybe that's one-eighth. Right, right. He's also saying I'm pro-black. Pro-black. Um, in this case, though, pro-black yeah. at the potentially at the cost of the feelings of your people. But there's but there's no way and you just way, said. I just throw one little piece. It's yeah. also hard. It's really hard for me. And I know you're presenting an interesting, and compelling argument. It's also really hard for me to have anyone defend Kanye under the guise. And I discussed this with Shani today. Under the guise of being pro-black. When the agenda that he's espousing is completely anti-black, also, like so, that's hard. so it's literally just the skin color of the person saying the words. That's what it feels like because yes. he's not saying things that are pro-black at all, 
at all. He's he he said last week or a week and a half ago, he goes, There's no, there's basically no group of people currently more under pressure and whatever than the white heterosexual male. Like he's saying crazy, untrue things related not just to Jewish issues, but to black issues. I said, I know people much closer to Kanye than Grand Pooba who are done with him. Yeah, I mean, maybe not forever, but checked out. I'm disgusted. I'm good. Okay, so all this is very macro. Yes. Micro. You're fine with giving up a relationship with Grand Pooba, one of your, maybe not your favorite artists, but an artist you look up to in this hip-hop game. You're fine giving up that relationship because he put up a picture of Kanye. Well, I don't have a relationship with him to start out with. So that makes it easier. You know, Jamar is a little bit more interesting because we have some relationships, so we we talked. But, like, I don't know Pooba. All I know is I tried to get Pooba on one up recently. He passed. And that's all I communicate. I don't I don't know him. Um, it's and funny. now you never will. <laughs> and, no, and it's funny, too, because I thought he was growing up in Brand Nubian. He seemed like, the to me, the least likely <laughs> to be anti-Semitic at the time back then. Now, if you want to go in in order, I believe <laughs> Sadat is actually the most chill member of Brand Nubian. Um, but yeah, I didn't have a relationship with him. I mean, was he that mad that I had said unfollow? No, 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 no. This no, I mean, no. Everything that was said, I said it. What, yeah, between I us. Why, why couldn't we? It's not like I'm saying like if I'd written "go fuck yourself," you know. Um, unfollow is go fuck yourself. You say that, but it's not. The the language makes a big difference. No, I think in the social media world, if you say the words unfollow, you could have just unfollowed. But if someone said unfollow to me based on an opinion I have, I'd be tight, but I wouldn't be as tight as them go saying, go fuck yourself. I, saying, I know a lot of situations where it's the same thing. But you're saying specifically when you write unfollow. Yeah. You're saying With exclamation I'm, points. You're saying I'm disgusted by what this post is. Yeah. So you're write that. Saying, you're not saying go fuck yourself. I'm just saying there's a, to me the you idea that say, we, by the way say, no, no, let me be clear if you couldn't recover a relationship from unfollow you're a bitch like let's I'm if unfollow is too much for someone to make up with someone after that I don't bro, know you can like. make up from anything that's not the case okay. anything could be a make a, a makeup depending on who's you know who's dealing with it who yeah, wants and to I, make I have up. no idea what Pooba's like as a guy or if he even cares so uh, right uh, but unfollow in, in this instant is from a Jewish guy about you thinking he's supporting Kanye's anti-Semitism, it is a, it is a go fuck yourself. It's not as big a go fuck yourself as co-signing Kanye West. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's go fuck everybody. Like, yo, when you say when you say I'm going to support someone right now, who is showing a who's, disdain for or being nasty to. You're the group of who's people being attacked. Of. who's being attacked, who's being attacked because he's doing that. I don't, you I can't I'm just saying, the order. You can't, he didn't get attacked, but people do, though. Well, the, uh, listen, it's not chicken or egg. You know I mean, I, I am, I gotta tell you, I am at the point now, a few weeks into this, where I am like, I'm admittedly, I'm no Dr. King. Okay. God is still working on me. I am over explaining to people like basic bigotry. Like, no, that's. Okay, you have a problem with power structures in Hollywood. That's fine. That's one thing. Oh, you have a problem with Israel and the way that they uh, uh, treat Palestinians. Okay, don't <laughs> keep all of that into just Jews. Like this should not be hard. You know what I mean? Like if any so, if any white person around me said, "Oh, I had this interaction at work with this black person," I, I could say, "I'm done with black people." I'd go, <laughs> "Okay, we're not friends anymore. You are a psychopath, racist. Goodbye." <laughs> so why is it acceptable we're giving a pass to people that they're allowed to be like, you know, I think a problem with Jews in Hollywood, so fuck Jews. Like, you're, you're not even in Hollywood. You don't even know. And the frustrating part about Ye is... Well, the music business is Hollywood. That's what I mean, though. But I'm talking about the fans. Like, oh, the Johnny, fans, yeah, Johnny yeah, the, the other fans. day talked about how, like, this conversation, yeah, it's not... He may have not said it in an ideal way, but it's good to have the conversation. It's important to people. I said, his original conversation... 
doesn't have anything to do with regular people. It was billionaire talk. And what he and and furthermore, totally ass backwards. If he really felt the way he later said he did, of like, like I'm jealous of Jewish people. They do such a great job with this and that. Bro, Kanye's so powerful. He could have literally sat down at the table with the most powerful Jews in the industry and said, "Can we work on some things?" He could right. have gone that route. Right. That's a good point. You think he couldn't get a meeting? With the highest ranking people in the business, I so I don't okay, think okay, that's a that's a very interesting point. Kanye West, as powerful he is, it's not even powerful. He's influential. Influential. That's a great influential. Way. Very influential guy. Has some questions about the Jews running the media and 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 the music industry and whatever else could have put together. A, a a retreat, a Jew treat, <laughs> some kind of retreat with some of the most powerful Jews in the industry. That would be that would be interesting. Now, um, would they be honest in that kind of meeting? Could they really say what it is they do or not do, or you know what I mean? Would you uh, get real answers? Would you get? I don't know. Would you get real questions from Kanye? I, I don't know. I mean, no, but see, if if the scenario is if Kanye is of sound mind, well, well, the, well, the, it depends. And it maybe not Kanye. Who, whoever else, Jay Z, if you organized this, if you were to ask Lord Jamar or, or or someone who thinks similarly, they would probably say no because these people, they're not going to ever do that because they're evil, right? You know, and they're, right. they're and they're and this is their plan, right? Whereas, like, you know. Bro, there are there are What's people. A cabal? And, cabal, I, I I see it as like a secret group. Okay. But look it up. I don't know. How do you even spell cabal? Bro, you're asking me? Ask me how to spell chicharrones. I got you. Really? Actually, I don't know how to spell that either. I was going to say you do? I don't know how to spell that. Cabal. <laughs> I can spell yellow rice. <laughs> you can spell, yeah, they can do that. Is oh, that how my you, eyes always look. Perfect. Do I always look this high? Do you always look this high? Yeah, Hold is this on. How yeah. my eyes always look. Um, this is your Jew lawyer. My Jew lawyer's calling. Hold on. Let's put him on real quick because he can answer the question. I think. Nick. Hold on. If I'm not on, what I wanted to talk to you about was just, you know, how it's going with me rigging the Brazilian election today. Um, and <laughs> you love your. I also you love few- you love this joke about you rigging the Brazilian election. I don't even quite get it. Is that supposed well, to? Yeah, say what does he mean? That like no, Jew, I am rigging this that Jew, but is that is the play on the joke that like Jews would be rigging the Brazilian election? I mean, yeah, we do everything, dude. Right? Is so it far, is it you, all elections, or is there something specific about Brazil that you guys are a part of? Well, no, they just had an election, right? So that, and the Jews, that's why, you're that's, saying the Jews that's are probably the one involved. That I happen to be in, right? I'm involved with this one right now. You know, I got to look at the election calendar. Well, and also by the way. But that's a good one to be involved in because it involves like a, a right a right winger in Bolsonaro. So you oh, need to say it involves some big old butts. Okay. Well, hold on, Peter. I think you're you're. I'm pulling the strings on both sides. Oh okay. God, you're you're like the Chinese government. You're saying. Now no, hold I, on, hold on. If anyone else was making these jokes, you would then get upset. Correct. So you can make your own joke. Well, no, 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 no. Well, first off, it's not a joke. No, it is a joke, obviously. Second off, if they were making it in this facetious way, no, I wouldn't be mad about it. Yeah, that's true. Too. Like, anyway. I'm, Billy, I'm look up facetious. <laughs> Nick, how do you say? He said, Billy, look up facetious. Uh, Nick, how do you spell cabal? Uh, C-A-B-L. Do you know what the origin of the word is from? No. No, please. Kabbalah. The Hebrew word, which is the Jewish book of mysticism and sorcery. You said C A B L. You know what he meant. Oh, no, yeah, C A B A L, a secret political clique or faction. Oh, correct. Cabal's galore. Uh, and by the way, Nick's calling me back. I imagine because of what I called him about that. I, when Saif and I have been so deep in the shit on this um, stuff in the on the Patreon that I didn't get to mention how happy I am today oh, that. Yeah. It, it, the word on the street is that the Washington commanders are looking to sell. I heard that. I, That's I, crazy. I, I actually can't even believe it, like that it's real. I just went to ESPN, and it's the big breaking thing. Sight, you hear nothing about sports. But, no, even but why are you happy that they'd be selling? 
because you don't remember from our t time doing the show, like this, the owner's terrible. The owner's yeah. Dan, Dan, Dan Snyder. There Dan you go. Snyder, that's my friend. Oh, yeah. Didn't you like go on his plane or something? We hang out and I saw his plane next to Dave's plane. We hang out in Aspen together. <laughs> what was the company? I mean, that oh. sounded. That's, uh, by the way, when you say that you were hanging out in Aspen <laughs> with Dan Snyder, you know who it sounds like is in a K-ball or Kabbalah? <laughs> yeah, you Cypher Cypher. Sounds. Exactly. You're Look Cypher. at yourself first. Yeah, Look you're... at yourself first. <laughs> yes, 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 I mean, you're in a cabal. That is a fact. Uh, Nick, I'll... That's I'll... What... There's a I'll lot of candles in that room. Can I just tell you one thing? Oh, to, God. To the point about the joke. It wouldn't be to a the phone point call. about the joke. It wouldn't be a phone call with Nick if his Bluetooth didn't change in the middle. Go ahead. No, no. I'm not going to make sure it didn't change. Did you see, like, on Instagram when I put up the the, the stonemasons thing from The Simpsons? The who keeps the metric system down? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that? I, I did. I did. Somebody, and I said, I was like, I was like, see, the Sim Simpsons predicted something else. Ka Kanye only, um, He's saying it now, right? A dude DM'd me, and he, he goes, does that mean that you're confirming what Kanye thinks? Uh, listen, people are very, very dumb. You're like, I'm like, no, it's the Simpsons. It's, it was a joke about the Freemasons. Oh, okay, guys. But that's, um, that, that's the thing. Why even that, That's why this whole conversation visa vis vis That's why maybe media. we shouldn't make said jokes. We should just scratch them from the podcast. Well said. No. Oh wait, hold on. Right. Hold on. Here comes the Jew media. Nick, Who it's is it? Time to go. <laughs> you must hang up the phone, Jew. Uh, All right. Who, goodbye. Was that Moses? <laughs> all right. Bye. bye. <laughs> um. All right. So anyway, goodbye. this is all. This the is getting into Jew media. This is getting into all the stuff we've covered in the last couple of episodes. Sure. Going back. Go back, micro. So, again, what is your point? You want to tell Pooba you disagree with him? Yeah, I mean, essentially, if you want to keep breaking it down further, you're you're expressing that it hurts you. Like what you I, saw hurt you. That that's what it's that's what unfollow essentially is expressing. I am hurt to see that you support at this moment. You think it's the time to support Kanye. That hurts me. Unfollow. I didn't write publicly. Hey, that's what I'm saying. That. What I that's what okay, that's it hurts you. I have trouble with getting hurt by the actions of people, other people. You know what I mean? Like this is where this is between you and me, Cypher Sounds and Rosenberg. I'm trying to figure out the differences between you and me. I don't ever get hurt by stuff like that. You know what I mean? It doesn't affect me. And it seems to affect you a lot. And I I feel my way is right because I don't get hurt. I want to help you. But maybe I'm so nullified. That's not a, the word. Yeah, that's a word. But you, but you nullified. I saw it in Daryl Brooks' trial. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense here. You're so nullified. And you're so numb. Numbified. Sorry. Yeah, I mean. I'm being facetious. So... <laughs> I, so, I I can't I can't be that way. That that's not in my DNA. But this but it hurts you. Yes. Some other guy's opinion. That has nothing to do with you. It has to do with you because you're Jewish. Correct. If you weren't Jewish, would it hurt? I still wouldn't like it. I I I would not. It hurts would, more because you're Jewish. Absolutely. This it, it, this you're. I see what you're doing, but you're also like ignoring some basic human emotion. Like we, the how closely related I still am to people who were killed in the Holocaust creates a lot of sensitivity. It, okay. it's, and there's okay. there's there's no way around it. I can never. The whole thing that's that's really the reason this is such a big deal to people or to Jewish people, I should say, is because we are so closely removed from the Holocaust. And the things that Kanye were saying. Not to say that there was zero truth to anything he I know, said. I know what you're saying. But but the way he framed it reminds so first, you of the Holocaust. First of all, I hope in true sincerity between you and I and the people listening, I hope I don't sound insensitive towards that. No, no. Or like I don't I, I don't get the sense you're actually defending anything that was said. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm 100. I agree with you that it 
should hurt in a way. But personally, like because you do this when it's not related to Jewish stuff. You do this when people say remarks about whatever, anything. So in this instant is actually backed up by your family history and, and world history and fucking you know modern day politics and 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 racism, all that shit. But you do this when somebody talks bad about Pro Era. You know what I mean? Like Pro Era is the worst rap group ever. And you're like, unfollow. Like, why That's how true. do things affect you so much? And why don't they affect if Kanye was like, I hate every Puerto Rican on the planet and I want to burn down Puerto Rico, Humble Park in Chicago, the Bronx, and Orlando. I'd be like, guy's wilding. Well, but you're but to be totally fair, your relationship with being Puerto Rican is different than mine with being Jewish. Okay, so what what do what close relationship do I have? And use that as an example. Uh, like oh, something else? Is if, if it was about hip hop or yeah, but that's what, but what? Comedy. Yeah, so what? So people talk bad about Dave Chappelle all the time. Right. It's, that's their opinion. I know they're wrong about a lot of things. I'm also way too inside because I know how he is as a human being. Wait, you know Dave Chappelle? Yeah, he's a DJ for Little Kim. Wow. So if if Graham Pooba or whoever, if some rapper went on and said Dave Chappelle is a f- transphobic, racist piece of shit, hmm. I mean, I, I, there's nothing that compares to the Holocaust. You know what I mean? But right, whatever. Like, yeah, I just don't let those people's words affect me. There's a guy, he wrote, there's a guy on my comments when I put up the Kanye shit. And all my Kanye posts are like kind partially like comedic writing. Like I'm trying to get better at writing. Mm-hmm. And I've been getting praise from some comedic people that I really respect. So I, my job is I'm doing good with, with what I wanted to do, my goal. But then it's getting these comments. Some people are like, you backstabber piece of shit. We're going to fuck you up. You you leaving Kanye out there to dry. And I just wrote back, I love you. Like, just <laughs> whatever. And then he also, another guy goes, it might have been the same guy. He goes, yo, you letting, you letting them talk shit about Kanye. You don't give a fuck about black people. I'm telling you, we're not going to let him fall. And then I just, I just commented back. The first verse of All Falls Down, Kanye West. Right. <sighs> but I'm always going for the joke. But always. we, we, there with Jewish stuff, man. And I think with black people and black stuff, oftentimes it feels too life or death at times to laugh at. Like it, it just does. And like if, if, if I came from a different situation, you know, like Natalie's not a child of the Holocaust in any way. Her parents are from a different part of the world. Mm -hmm. They were already in Israel. No, no, they went to Israel uh, in, in the, in the fifties. But prior to that, the families were in Tunisia and Iraq. So like, it's a different relationship than mine where my great aunt and great uncle were killed. My grandparents were separated for seven years. My mom was born in a displaced persons camp. It's all so it informs so much of the way I see the world that, yes, I'm down for jokes about funny anti-Semitic shit. Of course, privately, I am. Dude, you you know, me and you make jokes all the time, right? Like, it's not even a thing. I'm not a fucking sensitive little ninny about it. You know what I mean? I'm down to laugh at it all. Mm -hmm. But when push comes to shove and it's serious and you're talking about these big, broad tropes that remind me of that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's in my DNA to fight that, and and I okay. and I feel obligated to based on the things that my family, my grandparents, what they went through. I am too close. I knew them. I I can't not represent for what their experience was. Okay. That being said, all honorable, uh, uh, um, all honorable statements that you're making. Now, the point you made about Kanye gathering the most powerful Jews and having a discussion, why not you have a discussion with Poobah 
instead of just lashing out with on well, I, I did I did have one with Jamar because I don't know Puba like that. So I did end right. up having the conversation with Jamar. Um I wouldn't be opposed to that. I'm always up to conversation. The problem is it's where the conversation goes. Trying to find that middle ground is hard because there are some basic I mean, listen, Saif, I, let, let's be real, okay? Growing up a rap fan oh, in the 80s and 90s. Wait a minute. We're going to go real? Uh, let's be real. Very real. Yeah. Growing up as a rap fan in the late 80s and 90s, I already turned a blind eye to a lot of things <laughs> that sounded iffy, okay? <laughs> Any Jew out there listening knows when you grew up in the 80s and 90s, there were a lot of lines that you were like, eh, okay. Oh, wow, y'all idolize this person? He doesn't seem to like Jews that much. Okay, but I not a big deal. Not a big deal. I, I'm no problem. I still love this. I mean, there's a lot of ignoring that happens. Okay, I got it. But then when the person outright is like, nah, fuck the Jews, you're like, okay, I got to draw a fucking line somewhere here, all right? <laughs> and especially Kanye, he's such a dick because he has so many relationships with Jews. Like, it's, it's so fucking absurd. You know, we, I, we had Kevin Lyles on the show yesterday to... Uh, promote something he's doing i was like oh kevin lyles you're one of the black executives that kanye forgot existed somehow even though you were the president of his label when he was there yeah you know like it, the, def, say? the def jam structure is very funny because it was completely run by russell who had the jews under him and empowered jews and black people to run his company and that's and, and and I'm sorry. What what label did Kanye first end up on? Def Jam, Rockefeller and Def Jam. Rockefeller mm -hmm. is owned by who? Def Jam, Jay Z, Universal. Oh, what do you what do you what do you, what, do you, what business uh, structure are you asking about? Yeah, exactly. That's a great point. So <laughs> you're, you're under your first label was Rockefeller, Jay Z, yeah. Dame Dash, Biggs, primary yeah. owners. That's it. Right. Yes. They are an imprint of Def Jam. Russell Simmons. Okay, yes, under that, then you're getting universal distribution at the time or whatever. Yeah, but okay, I see what you're but saying. The point is your career wasn't being dictated at all time by Jews. It's not even true of your life. It's not even fucking true of your life that the Jews ran everything in your life. Yes, but now you're getting into Kanye West's mental stability and all of yeah, that this is this is a conversation. We already had this. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, that's no, you're you're 100 right, but we've had this conversation. No, no, and, and this is about like, this is about Pooh and, and Jamar. Uh, well, it, it's more about like okay, here's the ultimate point. As I'm having the argument, I go, "Oh, this argument is gonna go nowhere because we don't agree." I don't want to fight with these guys. I said, "Nah, I see your point. I'm gonna see y'all later. Love y'all. Peace to the gods." You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because. When he said the shit about, um, nah, Dave Chappelle ain't no medical doctor. I said, oh, he he's he's not gonna change. This conversation is not gonna mean anything. Right. My point was, hey man. Um, again, uh, many arguments I've had with people is Rosenberg said some wild shit, and they go, they asked me about it. You know, so you're used to that at this point i let but i let i there was a point where i go this argument is gonna go nowhere could turn into either a fist fight creating enemies um more long-term problems i didn't want it i don't want it so i just said nah okay i see your point and let it go now i don't have the argumentative tenacity that you have and I'm wondering, I think my way is right. You think your way is right. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, is there such a thing as right? Ooh. Is there such a thing as right? You know, I'm looking at, like, I am i don't agree. I never agreed with everything Pooba and Brand Nubian said back then. Right. There's some stuff you left out. You said, I'm good on that part. But they... That music of my high school life led me down a path to create who I feel I have a solid foundation in the things I love, which is seeking knowledge and learning about different cultures and learning about the world and all that shit. So love that shit. All that shit. But it's 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 who I am. It's, it's I love seeking knowledge. I love reading. I love learning about different cultures. My crowd work in a comedy show is so good. 
Because I say niche shit to people from wherever they're from. Somebody goes, oh, I'm a Syrian. Now, my boy Will Sylvans just hears Syrian, which I don't even know if he knows what that is. Great point. But when someone says to me, I'm a Syrian, I go, oh, you're a Catholic Iraqi. And they go, what? How do you know that? No one here in America knows that, or like very few people. You know what I mean? I didn't know that. And I say, because I'm good at my job. You know what I mean? So if someone says they're from Turkey, I can make it a a, 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 a Turkish joke or fucking when they say they're Albanian, I go, oh, the bad guys from Taken 3. People are like, what? That's the bad guys from Taken, Taken 2, I mean. So like, but that all comes from years of just, I love culture. I love, I grew up with Albanians. I grew up with Trinidadians, Guyanese, Bengali, Puerto Rican, Dominican. All my Puerto Rican, Dominican jokes come from actual war we used to be in. But it comes from me seeking knowledge and learning about people all the time, being very inquisitive. And also, but there's another part we're leaving out here that the the, the start of this is all different too because it's not even about like relation, you know, conversations like you're describing. It's about like really broad, serious political conversations. Like, meaning this all starts with Kanye. Kanye wasn't just saying this in a vacuum in a private conversation. He has political aspirations. He endorses Donald Trump. He right. endorses all of these things. He felt the need to tell the world that George Floyd wasn't killed by the police. He has a very specific intent that's kind of serious in nature, which makes it all very different. And I, I, you're saying in a political aspect. Yeah, the fact I, I, I but I am not in pol politics at all. All. but you're but you exactly you're someone who, but you're someone who loves but, culture and since you're saying, enjoys you're saying my love of culture is is should i should also love politics that's what you're saying no no i'm saying your love oh. of culture allows you to actually have sincere good fun funny interactions with all groups where a lot of people don't yeah kanye's not saying, actually interested he's in saying culture. dangerous things he's just saying dangerous things about a group that he's uh, sometimes like ebro's been saying Sometimes people just want an excuse to say mean shit. But yeah, everyone has shitty people in their group. So, like, the fact that we need to keep re-explaining why we don't like all being tossed and say, yo, did you see yesterday we were talking to Math Hoffa, who was great, by the way? But even Math at the beginning, he didn't have any understanding of why I would feel any way about, like, the seemingly, quote, positive stereotypes about Jews. Right. Like, y'all got money. Y'all got this. Y'all got that. I'm like, yeah, we still don't like people saying that. It's still like no one wants to be grouped in with the whole thing that's not true. It's just not true. Well, see, now that goes deeper into like, oh, people think, oh, Jews, they rich, they got money. Some people might just stop right there. Oh, there's a reason why Jews have money. So then, it, but then the, you know that that comes from because Jews are controlling the banks and the money Dick. system. Which, again, you go all the way back now to the Jay Electronica shit. The reason I got tight about that and people had this plausible deniability of, oh, what are you even upset about? You're talking about the Rothschilds and synagogue of Satan. And mm. I'm crazy for being like, this all feels anti-Semitic. People thought I was fucking nuts. You're bringing up the Rothschilds and banking. Like, you, that. But, the, but there was, they did do that stuff, though, right? There are there are Jews involved in that. Sure, I guess it's not a part of my life. Like it's not okay. That's my point. It's not a part of your life. But then you get upset when someone because, says something. Because, because when people said those things about these other broad people, the banks, the journalists, blah blah blah, my family's the one who got killed because of it. Ah, it started out as conversation about the bank so, and about the blah, blah. Before so, you know it, people so were in the trains. So in the fucking 30s. It was all this shit. Same, oh, no, you know what it is? It's the bankers. It's the fucking media. It's the and then that's snowballed into. And after okay. 10, 15 years, now it sounds a little more normal. I'm used to people saying they hate the Jews. Who doesn't hate the Jews? I don't hate the Jews. No, you love the Jews. I don't you're hate you hate if, if you're you, you decided. But that's the thing. That's interesting, too. Like. You're you're aware of it. You chose the way I chose to be in hip hop. Do I always think I get a fair shake at everything in hip hop? No, no, I don't. But I don't complain about it. 
because I'm volunteering to make my living here. Yeah. If you decide to go be a part of Hollywood, you are making a decision to be in a world that Jews were the first ones in. Like that is, no one's putting a gun to your head and saying Hollywood's the only place to go. Last time I checked, there are a lot of artists who did, like everyone says, oh, and the Jews hoard all the money and no one else makes any money. I don't know, man. I look at that billionaire list and I see a lot of names popping up of people who did really well in the music industry of all backgrounds. Yeah, Not I don't know. Well. I... Jay-Z does quite well. <laughs> Russell Simmons does well. L.A. Reid does well. Dr. Dre, he did pretty good. Rihanna, she's a billionaire. Beyonce, there are a lot of people that are doing quite well. Top yeah. Dog, he's doing good. Kendrick, Dave Free. I go en chapter and verse endlessly about people whose lives are fucking great from the music I guess industry. I look at it like... Robbed of every penny. Listen, I'm down for conspiracies and world domination and new world order, all that Ooh. shit. I'm down for all of it. But also, I look at things like, yeah, a lot of lawyers are Jewish. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of Jewish people are in the industry that I happen to work in. But I just look at it like somewhere along the line, these people decided to work in this industry. I don't get mad at the... Uh, Chinese food restaurant owners like why? Well, why all these Chinese people run these Chinese restaurants? You know what I mean? Like, I don't look. I like yes, yeah, certain people. Why are a lot of Irish people cops? Well, I can break it down. Why? Why are a lot of black people basketball players? Well, I can break it down. Why? You know what I mean? So it's like every group, everything has a group. Why are there a lot of Beng Bengali cab drivers, but that's, you know but that's you're but because you're reasonable, so I'm you want to find out the explanation. And, as I, and I look into those things. Whereas other people just want to go, they really think there's like an. If to me, what it feels like is, on some level, people believe it's in our religion to yes. be bad, yes, to be yes. nefarious, to be yes. evil. It's in there, and yeah. I'm just like, yo, man, it's so wild. Because don't get me wrong, there are Jews in this world, and. Come on, guys. Be realistic. Everyone talks shit about their own group at home. I don't like I, your chain outside your shirt. It's, it's I, been I, I, me for a while. I talk a lot of shit about <laughs> Jews at home in the privacy of my own home, right? Of course yeah. we do. We all do shit like yeah. that. Yeah. But also, to be honest with you, like 90% of the Jews in my life, and there are a lot of Jews in my life, are fucking wonderful people. Like really the salt of the earth. They're on the right side of the issues. They care about other people. They fucking, you know, they have Black Lives Matter signs on their lawn. They vote for politicians who may not even be good for their own financial interests, but are good for the financial interests of others. Like, I, it, so that's the thing that really stings too is like, not only are you saying that this exists, and maybe it does on some level, but by tying us all up into it, you're really shitting on the much bigger. If there is some cabal, some evil Jewish media cabal, is that the biggest percentage of Jews? How many people will be a part of that? 20? Yeah. Right. There are 20 million of us. You know what I mean? Around the world. Yeah. And then, like, yes, I, I'm going to say there's definitely secret groups within the Jewish whatever. You know how I know that? Mm -hmm. Because there's secret groups. Of every type of people. And that but that part no one wants to how about how about okay, here's the real fucking shit. <laughs> when Math Hoffa <laughs> when Math Hoffa because Math Hoffa had a shake up on his show, he had to he he fired some people that were on his show. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said he said to them was <laughs> he walked into the barbershop where they shoot the show and he said, Hey, when y'all gonna let me into the other group chat? That was a great and line. That Bro, that was so poignant. Like, you know there's another group chat. Yep. Where you have to name the group chat in your phone to make sure you don't text the wrong people. That's exactly right. Here's what it boils down to. Because oh, the last two, three weeks have become way too political and world fucking <sighs> situations. What it comes down to is Peter Rosenberg hates rappers from Westchester. That's what we have learned. If you come from New Rochelle, if you come from Mount Vernon, you're going to get 
you're going to get slapperized by Peter Rosenberg. Locks, you next. Okay? Yonkers, you about to get it. By the way, and I just recently reached out to uh, try to get Eddie F on one app. You may not want to show up, my guy. Yo, listen, anybody from Scarsdale, Ardsley, DJ Largemont. Martino. You're next. Juanito about to get it. Dominican Drew, you get you you did your time in Westchester. Yeah, you about to get it. All. No wonder you hate me so much. You from New Rome. Oh, yeah. You from New I'm from Rome. East Chester, East Chester. Wow, Billy Janelle. Oh, but, 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 and also, that's pretty Why bad because I'm Jewish Why too. Why are you yelling? Why are you yelling? Why are you like you're so loud? <laughs> by the way, by the way, Billy June uh just jumped on. I have to tell you, before we wrap here, I gotta go. <laughs> Billy June got a uh uh his beard, he shaved. He went completely clean shaven. <laughs> I'm being serious. This was the best decision of Billy's life. I disagree. You I think he's better look, with the beard? I think he looks like a. I think he looks like a a, a, a deformed Woody Allen. <laughs> I hate it. I just needed to give my face a breath. I I, I think it's much better. <gasps> well, no, man, I'm not saying you couldn't pull off a good beard, but I think when you let it, <laughs> when you let it get too big and out of control, it makes you look like a fucking mess. I agree. <laughs> like, 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 listen, <laughs> it took me a very long time to get a good lineup. Oh, uh, I lineup. was in a good groove. I was in a good groove. But then Bro, where do you get your hair cut? Where do you get your hair cut? Billy? Yeah. No, you, Peter Rosenberg. Some spot up here that listen, charges me. One way. day, one day, when we start doing one up in the studio, we're together. I'm either going to bring Didi the Barber down oh, to please. the studio or we're going to drive out to Brooklyn because your lineup is great, but you got a couple spots. You got to, you got to fill that in. He's, the, he's gonna get my guy's doing all you can do to fill in the spots. He's gonna no, your guy sucks. Okay, Didi got the tss, tss, tss. Didi got the airbrush, the fucking the, what's the, tss, the tss. he's gonna fill in them, them little spots. You gonna put a little spray in there? Well, you Steve Harvey out, that shit up. Won't that come out when I? Won't that come out when I shower? It lasts for it lasts for a while. <laughs> okay, we'll deal with that. Anyways, Billy, you know I thought you looked good. Okay, it was a compliment. So. Great conversation. Uh, we learned nothing. Um, we said it all. all we said it all. Said, um, I hope that honestly, really this is it. We're no more. No more. No, 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 no more. Without like, so, unless something else really of note happens. Yeah, no more. It's, it's no more. It's too much. I, I, I want to talk about rap next time. Um, we got to talk about uh, takeoff. Um, in the next in, in the next free episode, we'll do that. So, rest in peace, take off. We appreciate you guys for listening. Do me a favor, go fuck yourself. No, 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 no. Unfollow. Um, subscri unfollow. Subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube. Yeah, don't don't uh, unfollow. Subscribe. Yeah, I don't unfollow and share. And thank you for being on the Patreon. And peace we out, my mother. We hope you like this. Goodbye.